watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. Thank you. Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush has been out of the state or otherwise off of work nearly half the time since his father, Jeb Bush, entered the Republican race for president. The Houston Chronicle took a look at Bush's calendar, agency records, and social media accounts to determine the personal time he took related to the presidential campaign. Despite pledges to remain focused on his elected office, Bush took personal time, 23 of the first 50 work days since his father announced his bid on June 15th. According to the newspaper's analysis, Bush took dozens of smaller chunks of time off, adding up to eight more days. However, a spokesman for the Texas Land Office, Brian Preston, disputes the Chronicle's examination, claiming the story was based on opinion, not facts. From mid-September through October, the Latino community celebrates its culture through events and festivities. To celebrate its first year at UT, the Mexican American Studies Department kicked off its official first Hispanic Heritage Month event. Reporter Cassandra Jaramillo gives us the recap. One of my favorite activities here is dancing. You have so many performances, they're so electrifying, and it's just that uh, Mexican flavor that gets you dancing, and I love it. Hispanic Heritage Month started last week for its annual celebration that honors the Latino culture. And the University of Texas started its kickoff of month-long events with nationally syndicated columnist Gustavo Arellano, who spoke about the importance of ethnic studies. Ethnic studies has received pushback in other states, but Arellano, who teaches Mexican-American studies, says it's because those opposed are misinformed. People are afraid of ethnic studies because they think it's somehow seditious, that the people who go to these, who enroll in these classes or major in these programs, that they're going to become anti-American and not want to learn about the history of the United States. But those people who criticize has, have obviously never been to a Chicano studies class. They would learn that it's all about the history of the United States, except through the eyes of Mexican-Americans, through their perspectives, and through their hechos. It's the special hechos, achievements, and events that bring a community closer for the month. KBR News. Homecoming is a week of events that celebrates diversity on UT's campus. Lauren Hubbard has more on the story. The black community started their homecoming weekend off with the Bang and Hog Auditorium Friday night. Fraternities and sororities competed in a stroll off that showcased past and future dances. Yet, they wasted no time setting up for Saturday's tailgate. The last time it's been seen in its full capacity was in 2012. So we worked together to make sure that we could provide something back into the community at UT and also connect with our alumni. Students and alumni reunited by the MLK statue, waiting for sausages, burgers, and chicken that the members of Omega Psi Phi fraternity barbecued. Freshmen who had never experienced black homecoming before felt right at home and got to see the importance of a community sticking together while having fun in a positive environment. Everybody's, you know, close and I know it's just, it's like family, so, you know, my experience has been fun. The Black Homecoming Weekend concluded with all the fraternities and sororities strolling together as a unity and representing their colors, university, and the black community. In a colorful ceremony filled with presidential symbols, President Finvez formally took office. This marked the University of Texas's 29th presidential inauguration. The president was given several gifts, including the official ring of the University of Texas. The culmination of the ceremony featured the president's first State of the University address. President Finvez spoke of the university's future and what to expect from him as president. Earlier today at UT, President Greg Finvez was interviewed at the Austin Club by Texas Tribune CEO Evan Smith. The conversation started off with a discussion of now former athletic director Steve Patterson and his sudden resignation that hit news early last week. After standing by the claim that Patterson in fact resigned and wasn't fired, Fenves and Smith discussed campus carry, the admissions process, 
rising tuition prices, and student debt. Austin is known for its original cuisine and popularity in food trucks, but should that transfer to our own campus? Our Cortland, Cortland Cole tells us student government's initiative to spice up campus dining. After 70 years in the making, food trucks on campus may finally come to life on Speedway Plaza. Student government's initiative, SG Listens, resurfaced President Rainey's initial talks of diversifying on-campus dining. Student government now is just kind of expressing support uh, for the student body to, to recognize the students on campus do want those increased food options uh, and then kind of, you know, it gives a way to for administrators to know that there is wide student support and hopefully it can kind of push the project along. Chuck's come to campus, unfortunately, is not up to us. Aramark controls the vendors and services that come to UT. But don't worry, Longhorns, businesses like Pete's Harry's and Torchy's have been brought up in recent talks. The addition of food trucks comes with the overhaul remodeling of Speedway. We talked to the manager of Cal Tipping Creamery, a local food truck, about what it would take to work on campus. I think it would be very interesting if they did a, like a rotating food trucks throughout there to keep it nice and fresh on there, because it's hard to keep it one spot and definitely power your work and worrying about on the truck. Cortland Cole, KBR News. Well, this heat definitely calls for some ice cream trucks on campus. Our Mercibel Cardoso is live in the studio with this week's forecast. What does this week look like, Mercibel? After the break.